Okay, do you want to know how you know you read your Bible enough? Look what just happened to me. This is my Bible. <laughs> you know what? I was waiting for it to happen. It was going to happen. Hi, I'm in my car. I know I'm always sweating in my car, but I promise today I won't be sweating, okay? Because it's 7.50 in the morning right now, so it is not that hot yet. I live in Florida. Take it easy on me, okay? And I love to film in my car because I feel like it's just, I don't know, it's so comfy. It's not as forced as you guys can tell. I move around <laughs> throughout. I have like five different places that I film regularly. Okay, so today we're going to be reading uh, Esther, I think, what, chapter 7? I'm going to open it. We're going to find out. Um, but in our last chapter of Esther, by the way, this has been so fun. What are we, seven Sundays in a row together now? Uh, those of you who have been following along, as you know, I am obsessed with you. I love you. This has been so fun because we've just done such an in-depth Bible study together. And I just pray out of this, what comes out of this is how you can see how long you can press into a book, how long you can press into a chapter and how there's just so much more than just like reading it and being like, okay, I read the Bible. No, it's not like that. It's so deep. Um, and there's just so much to be found, which is so cool. Okay. So in our last chapter in Esther chapter six, we see that Haman, we don't like Haman. He was severely humbled. And we love that. I think we love that because Haman was not a godly man at all. And if you are not rocking with God, if you are not on God's side, we see what happens, right? Mordecai, a godly man, he ended up being the one that was honored in the end. And we see that, you know, Haman was exalted at first by the king, but God put him right where he belongs. Um, unfortunately, this is a very crazy chapter. I say this is probably rated PG-13. <laughs> so follow along with me if you want. If you don't have your Bible, totally okay. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen and I'm gonna read quickly and then we're gonna go through it um, probably piece by piece. Uh, the second I say something and I'm like, oop, okay. Um, we're gonna press into that. Okay. Let's do it. So Esther chapter seven. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given to you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom and it will be granted. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition and spare my people. This is my request for I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. Okay, pause. So two things. One, Esther was really careful how she went about this, right? Like she didn't just come out and ask the king this request right away when she first saw him. She invited him to a banquet and she just went all out here um, in this strategic plan. And how she formulated this strategic plan is because she fasted before all this, guys. Before all of this, whenever we have a really big decision to make, we should fast. The Bible shows us that. The book of Esther shows us that. There was a really big situation that she really needed God's strength and courage. And she leaned into God for that. And how we lean into God is through fasting which I personally need to make more videos on, but I am just stepping into that as a follower of Jesus. So, which is cool because we can, we can learn together. That's one thing. And then the second thing that I see here is how Esther doesn't just come out and say, she's a Jew. She doesn't come out and say, me and all of the Jews are gonna be killed. As we saw, I think it was in Esther 4, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. We see that Haman never brought attention to the fact that he wanted the Jews killed. He just didn't, he didn't even mention the Jews. He just said a group of people. So Esther was strategic with the two and she didn't come out and say that specific group. Then we move on. <laughs> King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing. It just goes to show you how clueless the king is that he is the one that literally declared this to be ordered. And he is just so like, what do you mean? Like he has no idea about the situation yet. He is the one that gave this his approval. Oh my goodness. Esther said, <laughs> an adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. So she was super clever about inviting Haman there. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king got up in a rage, left his wine and went out into the palace garden. But Haman, realizing that the king had already decided his fate, stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. That just goes to show you, it's so interesting because Haman has no idea that Esther is even a Jew. And look what happened. His plot to harm God's people 
ended in him hiding behind God's people in fear of his life. The irony here is so much irony. Just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. The king exclaimed, will he even molest the queen while she is with me in the house? This is not going good for him, okay? Not going good for him at all. As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. This is actually so scary of a picture. You know, and that's why I made that video when you take your last breath. Guys, we really don't know when that's going to be. And Haman was not walking with God. So he was in fear of dying. We have no fear of dying because we know where we're going to go. So it's just really interesting to see, you know, if you're not walking with God, that day is going to come. That last breath is going to come. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Because we don't know how much time we're going to have here. You know, when Haman thought he was living the high life, he was exalted by the king. He was just living the life of his dreams. And look what happened. Then Harbana, one of the eunuchs attending the king said, a pole reaching to a height of 50 cubits stands by Haman's house. He had it set up for Mordecai, who spoke up to help the king. Do you remember that? You remember that? His desire was to impale Mordecai on this pole. This pole is now set up for Haman. The king said, impale him on it. So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai. Then the king's fury subsided. This is why I said this chapter is rated PG-13. <laughs> So what does chapter eight show us? Chapter eight shows us that when we step out in faith, even when we don't know what the road is going to be ahead, Esther had no idea what was going to happen. She was playing 50-50 with her life, but she knew to lean on God and trust in God and have faith in God and to fast, especially before she embarked on this calling that God had put on her life. It reminds us that trusting God isn't about having all of the answers, but leaning into him despite all the questions we may have, despite our fear of the future. And in doing all of this, Esther is humble and she's meek and she's kind and she's courageous. She is strong, but at the same time, she is vulnerable. This reminds us that vulnerability is not a sign of weakness, but it's a symbol of courage. Honestly, to see how Esther goes about the situation, even though she is afraid, because I know what it's like to be afraid, <laughs> definitely. And I can really relate with that because even though she was scared, she still went ahead and did it. She still walked in courage and strength and leaned on God. I'm going to close this out with a quote by Charles Spurgeon. If you don't know who that is, um, it's actually the first Bible my dad ever got me was a commentary of Charles Spurgeon. And he said something that I think really applies here. To trust God in the light is nothing, but to trust him in the dark that is faith. Thanks for studying with me this morning. It is now getting hot. So I'm going to close out today's video. Um, I pray that you love this video though. And I'm so excited to pick up with you on our next Bible study with me next Sunday, BYOB, bring your own Bible. And it's going to be Esther, what, chapter nine, I think. Okay, let's do it. I love you guys. I'll see you for our next one. And God bless you. Have such a blessed Sunday and may the Lord be with you. I love you guys. Have a good one.